We have absolutely stunning Tesla stock news. You know how Elon Musk lost $25 billion buying Twitter? Well, Delaware Court said, hold my beer. How about $56 billion? A Delaware judge that was appointed by a Democratic governor, this judge retroactively took away Elon's $56 billion pay package that he earned because the company performed well. This is also the same judge that told Elon, you sign a contract to buy Twitter, so you better buy Twitter. And so Elon was forced to buy Twitter, despite finding out that uh, Twitter did not disclose how big the bot problem actually was. They basically lied. So she enforces a contract based on lies, but then she takes away Elon Musk's compensation that was democratically approved by Tesla shareholders because she says the process for coming up with Elon's compensation plan wasn't independent because Elon controlled the board and the directors who approved the plan weren't truly independent. Further, the shareholders who approved the compensation plan weren't made aware of this controlled relationship. Hence, the $56 billion compensation plan is voided. So the judge just basically called every single Tesla stockholder who voted in favor of the compensation package, an absolute, complete, 100% idiot. You think I don't understand that the board really likes Elon and Elon likes the board? That's one reason why I invest in Tesla stock, because I know the board is smart enough to actually let Elon do what he has to do to increase the valuation of Tesla in the long term. The board understands Elon Musk is a genius, so you gotta let the genius do what he wants to do. Sometimes uh, that means mistakes will be made. But when it works, it means the rewards will be so stunningly huge that in the end it will be all worth it. I don't want some entitled idiots running Tesla's board who think they know much better than Elon. And Elon has been wise to make an effort to make sure that the board of Tesla is a good board. Which also means naturally that they think in similar ways that Elon does. And by the way, what does it mean that the directors who approved the plan weren't truly independent? Where do you draw a line? Because in my mind, if you want to be truly 100% without a shadow of a doubt, absolutely, completely independent, you cannot be paid by the company that you're doing work for. And did these directors get paid by Tesla? Oh, now they are not fully independent, are they? By the way, generally speaking, most laws are written vaguely, and that's not by accident, it's by design. Because if you can have influence over the judge, then you can have any judgment you want because it's vague. What does it truly mean we're in truly independent? So you're saying the directors were independent, but we're in truly independent. You mean if you talk to Elon Musk, once throughout your whole life, does that mean you're no longer independent? You can certainly argue that you are no longer truly independent because you have talked to Elon Musk once. Does this sound fair to you, generally speaking? Investing is all about doing your own research, which means when something is put up to a vote, you do your own research. You just don't take anyone's words for granted. This is what investing literally is. I don't need a judge to tell me, oh, I should buy this stock and not that stock because their disclosures are going to be in LA. One reason why I invested in Tesla stock is because I believed at the time in the US legal system. I was under the impression that um, it's based on merit and capitalism and not taking away your property rights or in this case, your rights to your own earned money that was granted to you by the owners of the company Tesla. This judge is seriously gaslighting Elon Musk and Tesla shareholders. If this judge is not corrupt, that is even worse than corruption. Because if it's corruption, then okay, you can get down to it and you can get rid of it. But if it's deeper than that, then that means we are moving away from capitalism. It means whatever you own, you don't truly own anything because a judge can just come along and say, oh, uh, all this money that you made in the last six years from your job, we are taking all of your money away because you, my friend, have a relationship with your boss who 
approved your salary and therefore he was not independent. It completely doesn't matter that the boss owns the company. Everything that you made in the last six years, let's say you made $600,000 working for a company, you now have to pay all of that back. Anyway, if there was a good reason to never run a public company, yesterday was a good reason, Elon agrees. The parasitic load of being a public company has become extremely high. Gary Black, though, does not seem pessimistic about the situation at all. The judge overcomes the law by presuming the shareholders in approving the plan did not know the board was controlled by must. Tesla board merely needs to reapprove the compensation plan, disclose the desired language about control from the judge, and shareholders will overwhelmingly approve the plan again. Going forward, Elon needs to allow the compensation committee and the board to formulate his compensation plan independently. But what does it mean exactly? Independently, where do you draw the line? The next judge can just come in and say, oh, you have heard of Elon once before becoming the board member, therefore you were not independent because you had a bias towards Elon. You liked him. A Barron's reporter has an opinion about this matter. He says, this decision is so stupid. Is Elon Musk overpaid? Maybe. Did Tesla shareholders know what they were voting for? Absolutely. By the way, this legal judgment is 200 pages long. I'm going to be going through it. It's going to take a little while. I went through some of it, but definitely not the whole 200 pages. Investor plaintiffs argued that the package was just excessive. Elon has gone back to his board and said, no, 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 I need more stock mm -hmm. in this company in order for you to keep my brain power. Where do you come down on this? I mean, the biggest asset in Tesla is Musk. Musk is Tesla, Tesla is Musk. And obviously this is a jaw dropper that ultimately that came down in Delaware. I think the board ultimately goes back to the drawing board and comes out with a compact that could supersede this and maybe get Musk to what we believe could be close to 25% you know, voting interest. This is a, it's a pivotal time for Tesla. And there, the board is not going to take this sitting down. This is something they're going to fight. And I think it could actually be an aha moment for Musk. Now, one problem with devising a new compensation package that would get Musk to 25% is that um, Elon would get a bigger compensation package this time than the last time. And the last compensation package has already been deemed as unfair. So if the next one is even bigger, would that compensation package really be valid? If Tesla changes its state of incorporation to Texas, it's probably okay then. You wouldn't then have a biased judge looking at what you're doing. A big shout out goes to Warren for predicting that the compensation package will be overturned. He predicted this about 10 days ago. Amy says, it seems like Tesla shareholders have to put the 2018 Elon Musk compensation plan, i.e. ask that it not be nullified so the previous option still exists, back on the ballot at the next annual meeting. If placed there by shareholders, not the board, and voted on by shareholders, the judge cannot perform judicial overreach again to negate the majority vote of the shareholders. That judge is just a joke. It, in terms of disclosures, it, did she really want us to understand that Elon's brother is indeed related to Elon? That's the impression that I'm getting from this judge in terms of disclosures required. In the meantime, Elon Musk posted this video of Optimus walking around. Clearly, Elon is not spending any time at Tesla contributing to Tesla, uh, and that's why he should not be paid at all, right? This is from Electric. One of the main arguments from Tesla shareholders who are against this lawsuit is that it was good for everyone. Yes, Elon gets 6% more of Tesla, but Tesla gets $600 billion more in valuation. The judge had an answer to this argument. At a high level, the 6% for $600 billion argument has a lot of appeal, but that appeal quickly fades when one remembers that Musk owned 21.9% of Tesla when the board approved his compensation plan. In other words, the judge expected Elon to work for free just because he had some ownership of the company already. This ownership stake gave him every incentive to push Tesla to levels of transformative growth. Musk stood to gain over $10 billion for every $50 billion in market capitalization increase. Musk had no intention of leaving Tesla and he made that clear at the outset of the process and throughout this litigation. Moreover, the compensation plan was not conditioned on Musk devoting any set amount of time to Tesla because the board never proposed such a term because they understood 
He would never accept such a thing. He actually made it clear. I remember reading some of the transcripts from this trial and Elon made it pretty clear that Elon would not accept such a thing. Swept up by the rhetoric of all upside or perhaps starry-eyed by Musk's superstar appeal, the board never asked the $55.8 billion question. Was the plan even necessary for Tesla to retain Musk and achieve its goals? It's easy to come to conclusions in hindsight. And it's easy to forget how impossible a lot of these goals appeared back then. Anyway, I'm going to be spending more time looking into this whole situation. I'll be going through the judgment. Seems like there is quite a bit of uh, interesting information that's not necessarily related to even to this case directly, but just information about Elon and uh, board members overall. BYD just made a comment about Tesla. Tesla is our very respected industry peer. It is also our client. I think this market is very large. It's not that we must surpass them or they must surpass us. Instead, BYD and Tesla together or more new energy vehicle brands together, we need to think about how to increase the new energy vehicle K. Okay, he's talking about battery electric vehicles. Yesterday we saw 38 Cybertrucks total. And here is what we got today. Someone tested the new refresh model 3 range here in the US and the numbers were pretty good. In fact, Drive Tesla Canada wrote that the model 3 aced the 70 mile per hour range test. Looking at this data, it is absolutely obvious that gas powered vehicle sales peaked in the past and they are not coming back. The transition to EVs is happening. And that's it for today's video. My name is Matt Postius and I will see you in tomorrow's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Today's episode is shorter because I have quite a bit of paperwork to take care of today. I'm meeting with a lawyer and stuff like that. Just regular business stuff that you need to do once a year.